quackery, quackery. It breaks my heart when, you know, you have a guest and then you ask what happened that your hand or leg was amputated and the person goes to like the first handling was not done well and that caused the problem. You know, I, it's, it's becoming too often. I want to believe that right now we should be able to be very careful when handling issues that will cause further damage on persons with disability. Okay, now the situation has happened, but the society still hasn't been able to accept persons with disability, giving them their due in the society. Today on Against All Odds, we have a very determined young man, Adebayo Idewu, and he's going to take us through the story of his life, how it all started, and what he's been able to make out of his life. Don't go away. The program is against all odds on the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. And we're here all for you. My name is Dushima Pius Ikerovi. <laughs> This is against all odds. That initial stage, it wasn't easy. It wasn't funny. Because everything I needed, they do it for me. From bathing, washing, everything I ever needed was being done for me. But it reached a time while I was in secondary school, my mom stopped washing my clothes. And people were like, why, why, are, you, why are you stressing this boy? You are allowing him to wash clothes. He said, yes. Because I knew he is not going to stay with me forever. A time is coming when he will need to do this thing by himself. Then I started beating myself, wash my clothes, do all the house chores that others are doing. And that one have helped me a lot. A pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. Winston S. Churchill. This is against all odds. Today, you're going to take us through your story and let us into your world how this started. It all happened while I was small, like around the kind of age of nine. It was me and my brother, we were just riding bicycle, just playing, and I felt that was just all. The, where they took me to, they mismanaged it. Between three days, everything became scattered. They have to rush it to the general hospital. And reaching there, they said, ah, this thing, ah, this handsome boy, you people have scattered his hands and all this thing. The hand needs to be amputated. So we just like, my dad was like, no, no, whatever they can do to just treat the hand so that everything will be all right. But after some days, they keep on insisting, we just have to amputate the hand. My dad cried, but he has no option than to accept, <laughs> accept it that way. Though they amputate the hand, then I was in primary too. So after the amputation, I come back to continue. It was a struggle, though I used to use left before, but not as, I used to use left and right. But now I have to know how to focus on using left alone because that's what I have. So doing it also giving me joy then, though there was a lot of challenges because I can't imagine me coming back without going to school. Now I come back just to struggle to go to school, learn how to write ABC and all these things. All the things I know how to do before, I just have to start afresh, keep on coping, keep on coping. That's how it has been. And I finished the primary school, looking for admission into secondary school. I gain admission. That's how the struggle continued. I finished my work in 2014. After the work, I was like, will I come and stay at home after the secondary school? So, no, let me give it a try. Let me apply to my school and, uh, and further the education. It was just like a joke. Though my wife came, up to today, I don't even check my nickel because I make my work once. 
So I don't even know what happened to the neko because this one is okay. Do I need to go and be stressing myself? Anytime I need it, I will just go and collect and come and keep. I gain admission to Kogi State Polytechnic then. I applied for computer science. Reaching there, everything became scattered after the registration. To go to my HOD office to submit my file, he said, ah, your file is no longer here. Your course has been changed. I was like, wow, how can that be happen? I was confused because I don't even know who to, who to move to. And the man said, me, just look at me, he said, Kai, the course they will give you now, it will be hard for you in time of practice. It's either they give you architectural or mineral resources engineering. So, and in time of practice, with one hand, you will not be able to cope well. He looked at me, he said, computer science will not accept you back because the population is much. But did you love statistics? I look at myself, and while I was in secondary school, I don't love mathematics too much. I just like, ah, let me give it a try now. He said, statistic. The thing is, I don't want to leave that environment at that moment. I just talk to myself, is it not statistic? People are there, they are doing better. Why can't I? I just say, sir, I love statistics immediately. I love statistics. Had the man smile, he said, okay, go back to their, to their department, be receiving your lecture. After some days, come back, I will change your course for you. I laugh, I say, thank you, sir. Go back to the department. I was still seeing people are doing this, doing that. I was like, ah, if it is like this, why won't I cope? Mm -hmm. As far as people are here, they are doing better. The only thing is, anything I don't know, I reach out to people to put me through. Hey, I keep on doing it. Though there are a lot of challenges. Because making friends, some people will look at you as, I bet, let's just avoid this one and move on. But as God will be having it along the line, when the thing have entered me, I have to be teaching people too. Mm -hmm. So then friends were now coming close. Mm -hmm. hey, those people that are run, when they know that you have something to offer, they will come back. And I started having the joy. I said, okay, if others can do it, that's the word that motivates me to keep on moving. If others can do it, I can. I don't look at anything called disabilities in me. What I need to look at, how to bring solution. Despite that life has not been easy, the way we want it. But I didn't relent. I didn't give up. Because I know there is a purpose why I was being created. And if I now sit down and I don't want to achieve the purpose because of disability, whose fault? It is not God's fault. It is my fault. Then I have to take the challenges upon myself. That since it is like this, we have met it like this, I have to face the fear and fight the battle and won. After the school, the result came. I graduated with upper credit. I love. I say, God, I thank you. You did this again. Adebayo Idowu Omeza, born on the sixth day of June, nineteen ninety-six, into the family of Mr. Energy Adebayo. Idowu grew up with his parents in Ayengule Akonu, Akoko Northeast, local government area of Ondo State. He attended community primary school Ayegule Akonu Akoko in Ondo State from 2002 to 2008. The journey into the world of disability began in 2004. This was due to mismanagement of his fractured hands by a quack doctor while he was still in primary school. When you were talking, hmm? My eyes just kept staying on the amputated hand. And I just saw it with so much energy, you know, reacting. Is it reacting consciously or unconsciously? Actually, most of the, it is it's not consciously now, or neither unconsciously. The same way this one moves is the same way this one moved. As the hand is, I can still use it to jack buckets. Are you serious? Like, use it like this, put bucket, it will carry water. So the, it doesn't mean that the hand cannot work. It's working. I use it to hold things. At times when I'm moving, I, I, hold, I put my phone here. People are like, ah, be careful with that phone. The phone will fall. I will just smile. <laughs> you don't know the energy. I used to put something here and hold it. I ask people to pull it. They will not be able to pull it. Because there is also strength there too. So it doesn't mean that uh, they have, because this one is active, working as it ought to. So anything I needed to, the hand to do for me, to do for me. 
For Idowu, the amputation was a very painful experience. Emotional, physically, he was traumatized, especially having to start all over again. It was an experience he never imagined he would survive. Something strikes me when you said you actually carry buckets with that hand. I'm like, wow, does it have so much energy? And then how do you get to wash? It's my clothes not clean. It is. It is. And iron. Yes. I do them with this hand. It is a, it is normal. It has become a normal thing for me. It's something that I've, that I have been doing. Even while I was in school then, there was one lady like that that used to disturb me. Please, let me be washing your clothes. Let me be washing your clothes. And me, I'm a kind of person that... If anything I know I can do, to give it to someone to do it for me, it used to bother me. So because of her, because she used to worry me, anytime she was passing, she went to fresh water, she saw me washing, she would drop the water, she had to wash the clothes. So because of her, I changed my time of washing. I don't wash during the day again. It was in the night. Because I would just be like, the way you can do it, I can do it. Hey, but to them now, you to tell us, ah, you are stressing yourself, let's help you, let's do this. I would just smile. Today, Idowu is a graduate, not limited by his disability. During his NYC days, he jumped the ropes and participated in several camp activities. Adembayo Idowu tells against all odds that the strength in his left hand is amazing. He lifts up Heavy objects without shivers. When I fetch water, I jack, I use it to jack water. And people will be like, ah, with this one hand, there is one day I was fetching water. I just dropped the water. A woman, he thought it's empty bucket. So, because I just picked pick the bucket and dropped it. So he wanted to leave the water. He said, ah, uncle, there is water inside. And you just carry it as if it's empty. I said, ah, it's just nothing now. That's how the thing is to me. When I pick it, I pick it as if it's paper. Mm. Hey, because the strength there also is much. Wow. So I don't usually feel tired or get tired while working with the hands. Do you still feel pain there? No. At all? No, I didn't. Unless there is anything that hits me, that's when I can only feel pain. Mm. But pain. I can't. I never feel pain for once, ever since the amputation. I never. In spite of the rough road, Idowu has conquered the storm. With his favorite motivational quote, he says, If others can do it, I can. My number one role models are the people that don't give up. When I look at them, initially it was this Yinkaye fellow I look at. I was like, if a man like this can be this, serving God, worshiping, and things are happening, why can't I? Yes, he has disabilities, but in his own feed, there is every ability showing forth in it. Then I feel like if this man can be doing like this, there is no place I should find myself and I, would, I shouldn't do better than that. Those are people. And coming to Abuja, I have met a lot of people that when I see them, see the, look at their life, they are doing well. Despite the disability, they did not allow the disability to weigh them down. So then me too, I pick up from there that if these people can do it, I can do it. And that one has been giving me joy whenever I see them. And the only, another thing that motivates me, when I see people with disabilities doing wonders, like in an office, they walk, they do this, they do that, I will be like, one day I'm getting there too. And when I see them drive, that one have been my joy that one day I am coming. I will drive too. They have been my motivation. When I see them, I see joy inside of me. This inner spirit of me keep telling me, keep pushing, keep pushing. You are getting there. A man with one hand can deliver and perform excellently, he says. You can only attest to this if you give me the opportunity to prove myself. A lot of girls will come here and there to help assist, okay? 
Now, let, that takes me into my question. Relationship? Talk to us about relationship. Are you married? <laughs> okay. Not really. Actually, for now, I'm the one that didn't give in into a relationship much. Why? Because I still have a lot of things to gain. I understand one thing in, in relationship. Relationship contains commitments, communication, giving, and all those things. And there are some things I need to know. Because I will not tell you I love you, and I will not be able to take care of you. That one had only been the number one thing that kept me out of relationship. As I don't just want to give here for now. But I know very soon. Very soon. I've, I've reached the level now. <laughs> very soon. I, I, when I tell you I love you, I'm supposed to be able to take care of you. And now there is no work. I'm still learning and all those stuff. So, though I know it is not every lady that cares about that. Yeah, I will not deny that fact. It is not every lady that cares about that part. But me, I just feel like, let me get something to offer before I say, okay, let me push on into a relationship. Today, while still waiting for the white collar job, Adebayo Idowu has challenged himself to learn printing where his passion keeps growing daily. When they see us, they see the disabilities. They don't see that inside that disability, ability come first. Oh, sure. They don't look at it. Then I now decided, instead of me sitting like this, sitting like this, this one will not be enough for me. How long will I sit? Hoping that eh, God will do it, God will do it. I just have to start somewhere. Then I decided to venture into data business. I did an online business. So I begin to sell data. Are, most of my customers, I don't know them. Though I don't have much customers, but the one in my own circle, most of them, I don't know them. It might just be a link up. Okay, I need data. Send me. I will transfer your money and all those things. That's how I have been coping. So sometimes early this year, around that kind of February, I was like sitting down. It's come on, come on to me. Is this one enough? It's not enough for me now. Why don't you go? Instead of you sitting at home and be doing this, add another knowledge. Mm. And now ventured into printing press. I one day I started learning. That's what I'm doing presently. Even if the jobs are not coming, I don't need to look at myself as if I don't have anything to offer and be relying on people mm. to give me one or two things. And that has been giving me joy. This is Against All Odds. Against All Odds is a program that creates so much awareness on persons with disabilities. And then every other person, even persons with disability themselves, are great advocates of persons with disability, creating awareness and all that. Do you think the problem is with the persons or the problem is with the society that discrimination is still going on? Like I, like I have said, I have used myself on a, as an example. Though I know there are a lot of people with disability that doesn't care, they, do, they doesn't put any effort. But at least we that have put effort to go to school, achieve results, have something to offer, Anywhere we go, they shouldn't discriminate us. When we are in the community, since we have things to offer, why shouldn't them give us a test? Rather than looking at us as if those ones did not have anything to offer. Like I said, this hand did a lot of things. But now when I meet you now, you think, ah, oh, this boy have one hand. He will not be able to do this. He will not be able to do that. That's how it usually be with the society. Yeah. They don't care to give you a test and see can you really do this change? There is a saying I used to say, I said, two weeks too much. If you accept me in a word, give me two weeks. If I did not perform what you want me to perform, sack me, don't give me one error. Mm. That's the motto I used to give to myself. At times I used to say, a week, one week is too much. How will I enter into a place? Okay, I use, let me say, I use one week to study what is happening there. And in a week, I will not be able to. When I started the, uh, this my printing job, when I started learning, so I went there. The thing is, I focus on if you are doing this, if you are doing this, if you are doing this. 
That's my eyes will be everywhere. I did never, I only spend a week and they bring work. I printed the work. I printed the work. As in when my, when my boss come, he said, who print the work? I said, me. He said, wow. You are learning fast. I said, sir, that's who I used to be. I used to tell people that two weeks is too much okay. to learn. I am here to gain knowledge. If I am dead, give me a try. Let's see if I can really do this thing that you are saying. So don't, the, the society shouldn't just look at us as if this one, they don't have anything to offer because they are disabled, because they are this. Despite the disabilities, there are a lot of things we can offer. Like I said, I finished service since 2022, October 6, till now, I couldn't secure any a little single job because the discrimination is much. Now, I don't even have anyone there that can help me, but I have God. So will I now, because I need this, I need this, and I'll be roaming up and down. I sit home and I tire. That's what kept me to start going and to learn work. Why will I be sitting at home thinking ah, maybe it will, it will still be better, it will still be better, and I will be wasting a lot of years. Then instead of that, while waiting for a job, let me get another idea, add it here. At least in the future when job comes, this one will be added value for me. When I have money, I can open a printing press. That's another thing for me. So because I have had the knowledge from there too. So that's what I have to say. The society are not giving us joy. At times they make us to remember that there is something inside us. You are disabled. So that's what me I used to see it as. When I come to you, you know that I can do this thing and you did not give me the access to try. You are trying to tell me that your disability cannot come in here. Because you are disabled, you can't come in. Why, whereas there are people that did not have the disability, but what we can offer, they can't. And they don't want to test our brain. So all they see is physical appearance. Yeah. And that one is not giving me in particular joy. I don't get joy with it. Let them give us a try. And we will show them that we have something to offer. Though I know that it is not everybody, but I can say that 75% of people with disabilities, they have something to offer. Ido says to the world, give me an opportunity and let me prove myself. I would never serve you disappointment. Today, I know that I have a printer. Whenever I have printing jobs to do, I know who to come to. And I know that a lot of other doors will open and I'll know where to come to, right? Thank you very much for spending time with us. This is against all odds. You can be born into a poor family, but you do not have to remain poor. You have the power to navigate yourself out of poverty. Are the words of Adebayo Idu, who says that he has refused to look at his disability. The only thing that reminds him of his disability is when the society says no to him. Why is the society still saying no to persons with disability? These persons are filled with every ability that you can imagine. All you need to do is give them an opportunity to showcase themselves. Good thing is today, when I want a printer, I know where to go to. Idowu is waiting, handy with his good job. Give persons with disability an opportunity to thrive and let them show you who and what they carry inside of them. The program has been against all odds on the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. Thank you for staying with us. We look forward to seeing you again. Same time, next week, same station. My name, Doshima Pius Kirovi. Be good and have a fantastic week ahead. Thank you.